Sure, Saskia Mulder. I uh, I'm familiar. Uh, she does. She handles uh, uh, Thora Birch, and wouldn't she be a great Sarah? Uh, okay, you. We're talking about Tobit, and uh, I'm sure you know the story. Uh, it's in uh, a lot of Bibles. Uh, Sarah has been married seven times, and a demon comes and kills her. Uh, new husband before they can even consummate the marriage. Uh, sometimes he's killed under the tent right there uh, where he had just gotten married. So she's distressed, but she has to be likable. I mean, to go through seven Jewish weddings and uh, seven Jewish funerals, you're going to get attached to a character, her family, uh, they, the would-be in-laws, uh, uh, she could get it done. Uh, the likability. I, I like uh, Thora Birch. She is... Uh, I talked to Larry McMurtry 30 years ago and asked him, what was the key to uh, Lonesome Dove? And he said, uh, uh, Don Quixote. So how he said, well, the character's likable. We like uh, Sancho Panza and uh, Don Quixote. And I, that made sense because we were talking about Lonesome Dove, uh, Call, and uh, uh, Gus McRae. Uh, but it goes with women, too. Uh, you have to be likable to play a part like Sarah. I mean, uh, victimized by uh, the demon. and uh, Not that she fights back, but she doesn't relent. Uh, I don't know if either of these two, two ladies are religious. You know, Tobit is in uh, Catholic Bibles and Orthodox Christian Bibles, and uh, it's part of uh, Jewish lore. Uh, a lot of uh, Jewish individuals know the story. It's not canonized. It's not in uh, uh, any Jewish... Uh, it's not in the Torah, uh, but it's in the back of their head. A uh, Jewish girl... Uh, I said it in London uh, right before World War II, but uh, Thora would do a great job. And uh, Saska M uh, Mulder, she could she could help a great bit. Uh, actually, I sent the script to her office, and she's uh, reading it. Uh, I was kind of surprised. You send out a hundred query letters and two respond, and one will read it. Uh, with Tobit, it's a little bit different, and that's why it's going to make a great film. It's going to make a profitable film because of people that when they went to Sunday school when they were like seven and they heard the story of a demon killing uh, the husbands of this one girl, picking on her, bullying. Uh, they remember that. Uh, I've seen studies and surveys about likability uh, from uh, both Old and New Testament characters. Well, you, you know, uh, Abraham and uh, Moses and Noah, Jesus, of course. Uh, but uh, Tobit numbers are higher, uh, like on a per page, like per capita, per page. There's not, Tobit's only eight uh, pages long in most Bibles. Uh, now, my script is 90 pages, but uh, 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 Thora would do a great job as Sarah. Uh, now, about Tobit, I'm uh, Mel Gibson or Daniel Craig, and I know Tobit is 80 years old, but, you know, it tells his whole story. So from, uh, I guess, not a young man, a middle-aged man to an old man. So uh, either of those two guys would be great. I don't know if they'll touch it. I mean, they've got a moat of celebrity around them. And to uh, pierce that, to let, let down the drawbridge and let a script in is uh, unheard of. But... Uh, Thora would do a good job. I'm glad you asked about her.
Sure, Tobit is probably the greatest story never told on film. Uh, there's uh, a silent, a couple of animations, and some uh, short uh, short stories, basically from a uh, yeah from a Christian Catholic uh, uh, ancillary materials stuff that's uh, printed and uh, filmed to go along with uh, their Bible studies, but it's never been a, f a feature film. I guess let me tell you the uh, story. And I guess when I go to producers and uh, people in Hollywood filmmakers, uh, I pitch it this way. It's uh, eight Jewish weddings and seven Jewish funerals. Because the story of Tobit is about a girl named Sarah. She is a pious Jew uh, preyed upon by a demon. The demon's name is Asmodeus. And... Uh, She's been married seven times, and uh, seven times the demon has killed her new husband before the marriage is even consummated. So uh, she's at her uh, wit's end. Uh, she can't handle any more. The maid, uh, the family maid, uh, pokes fun at her, and she can't, she can't bear that. Uh, and then there's Tobit. Now, Tobit is going to be her uh, father-in-law in the end, and Tobit is one of the most endearing uh, characters in the Bible. Uh, he's a good man, charitable, pious, prays constantly. Uh, he has uh, uh, he gives good advice. He's very wise when he talks to his at the end of the film when he talks about to to his grandkids. Uh, it's in fact, a lot of Catholic scholars refer to a few of those books uh, in the Bible as the uh, wisdom books, books of wisdom, because they're full of... Uh, I, I tell you why people like Tobit is because he knows how to live. He knows the right way. And uh, he's very likable. Both, both characters, Sarah and uh, Tobit, very, very likable. You know, there's a lot of problems with Noah, problems with Moses. Uh, but if you ask who is the uh, most moral and uh, concerned about his uh, reputation, uh, not just with uh, his neighbors, but with God, uh, he... Uh, He's right up there at the top of the list, but they never made a film about it. Curious. Uh, I'd like to. I think uh, just the uh, seven, uh, eight Jewish weddings and uh, the whole idea of uh, uh, demonic uh, murder uh, will sell a lot of tickets. Uh it's in uh, Catholic Bibles. It's in Orthodox Bibles. It's in the back of a lot of Jews' uh, family history. Uh, in the Bible, it takes place a uh, more like 3,000 years ago. Uh, they think it was written 500 uh, years before Christ, and it's included in the uh, Old Testament. Uh I don't think people are going to uh, buy a uh, ticket to see uh, a three a three thousand year old story. It's you know weddings or uh, demons or whatever it doesn't matter. Uh, so I've said my adaptation of the Book of Tobit in Amsterdam in the nineteen thirties, nineteen forty one. Here come the Nazis, and they cart all the uh, Dutch Jews off to uh, uh, concentration camps. Uh, terrible story, but uh, I did I put it in Amsterdam because of the ge geography. Uh, the story that's in the Bible. I don't know if people are really aware of this. Uh, I wasn't for a long time. Uh, about 3,000 years ago, uh, the Jews in northern Israel, 
were carted off to slavery, and they think it uh, was between. They ended up uh, enslaved between uh, the Euphrates and the Tigris rivers. So that story uh, is the the original old story. My story takes place in Amsterdam and London, and because uh, a, lo a lot of the story goes uh, is between on water, it has to cross water. Uh, so it's set in Amsterdam, and. Uh, Okay, everybody that re has read the Bible, and that's about, uh, it's Catholic Bible and Orthodox Christian Bibles. Uh, we're talking about uh, one and a half billion people. They know uh, the end of the story. Uh, Tobit's going to die. He's 80 years old. He's, uh, we don't live forever. Uh, he's blind and feeble, and he's but his most uh, most worry his large, his biggest worry is uh, feeding his family, taking care of his family. He's always been a, a good provider, but at the end he's going to die. We don't live forever, and uh, so the question is, where will he die? Will he die peacefully in his bed in uh, Amsterdam? Or will he die a uh, frightful, ugly death in uh, a con Nazi concentration camp? Uh, all the characters are Jewish. Uh, and so I thought it would be that that theme or that question should be in the back of all the audience's mind as they as they watch the film. Uh, they know he's going to die. Uh, the question is where. So we've added a little suspense. Uh, uh, the characters, uh, well, of course, there's Tobit. Tobit's uh, over, well over 80. Uh, he goes blind, uh, prays to God uh, that God will kill him, take his life, and uh, call him to heaven. Uh, but God's not going to do that. Uh, it's too easy. Uh, and there's uh, Sarah. Now, Sarah is going to be Tobit's uh, daughter-in-law, and she's in London. Uh, they're distant cousins uh, in the Bible, so they're distant cousins in the movie, too. But uh, Sarah is the is the young lady that's having problems with the demon, and uh, she's about flustered out of her mind. Uh, she also, at the same time, uh, Tobit asks for uh, his death. Sarah also prays for her death. God's not going to do that either. Uh, Another character is Toby. Now, I was on the internet and looking at these strange debates that we ha we have, and it was basically uh, Protestants versus Catholics. Uh, the Protestants said Toby is not a religious name, and the Catholics were arguing back, "Yeah, it is. It's in the Book of Tobit." Well, the Book of Tobit are not is not in uh, Protestant Bibles. Uh, I asked a Lutheran uh, preacher why, and uh, he said, because it has magic. And uh, I'm, that makes perfect sense. Uh, uh, there is an element of magic in the story of Tobit. Uh, Tobit needs to go pick up some money in London. Uh, his father, when his father was, when Tobit was young, he put away some money in a bank in London. And now he's 80 and he needs that money to take care of his family because he's gone blind. Uh, so uh, he sends his son. Uh, 
but he, uh, Toby uh, doesn't want to go alone. Uh, who would want to travel uh, alone in the 1930s uh, with the Nazis controlling the continent and uh, cross the uh, English Channel? And uh, then get to uh, London and try to find the, the, the right bank. Uh, so uh, Gabriel, the angel Gabriel, is sent to escort him and take him. Tobit prays for someone to come along uh, to uh, go with his son for safety and security reasons. I can't think of a better security guard than Gabriel, a real angel. So these two uh, uh, head across the uh, Atlantic and they uh, meet Sarah. Uh, they stay uh, overnight in her house and uh, uh, you can imagine uh, Toby, he had heard of her legend that there was a girl in London, a Jewish girl, a nice Jewish girl who had been married seven times and seven times she'd been widowed and uh, I, I'm sure he was a little apprehensive my character in the story is a little apprehensive I don't want anything I don't, let's just spend the night and we'll be out of here uh, I can't fall in love with a, a woman that's been wet, uh, widowed seven times and uh, these deaths are not uh, when a demon kills someone it's not pretty it's not peaceful it's it's unnatural so toby is a bit unnerved and uh he and gabriel the angel gabriel uh no one knows that he's an angel he's just a good guy that goes along for the ride to provide a little extra security because uh toby's bringing back a lot of money uh, Gabriel says, no, marry her, go for it, you love her, she's nice, she likes you, nothing's going to happen, I won't let anything happen to you, in fact, I have a plan, and I guess that's where the, the magic comes in, so Gabriel introduces a uh, magical solution at, that will allow Toby and Sarah to get married, so there are other characters, uh, but basically, Tobit is the father-in-law. Sarah is the daughter-in-law. Toby is the son. Uh, and he's going to be the groom. And then there's Gabriel. Uh, I talked to a, just by chance, a casting agent in Hollywood. And she doesn't deal with any, any of these people. Uh, but she said, Mel Gibson would be a great Tobit. And I thought, that's right. I, I, I was honestly thinking of him when I adapted that because I read the, the book of Tobit and I thought Mel Gibson could knock that out of the park. Uh, and I think Tobit has, the story has so much weight. I don't think somebody can just walk off, you know, a bus, get off a bus and play Tobit. Uh, I think it it's going to take a lot of gravitas, but uh, who better than Mel Gibson? If, if he would do that, boy, I would I would be elated. Uh, I'm not sure his people are even open to anything, and maybe they're they want him to go in a different direction, uh, irreligious direction. Of course, he's made two uh, great films about the New Testament, but I promise you, he's not immune or opposed to uh, doing something from the uh, Old Testament. And, and uh, I, I just challenge you and people listening to this interview to uh, read Tobit. Email me and I'll send you a copy of uh, the script. And uh, I made that offer to a guy, and he said, no, 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 don't show it to anybody. You, you can't show it to anybody. Uh, I said, why? He said, well, it's a script. They'll steal it. D dude, it's in the Bible. It's been around for 3,000 years. Uh, 
there's one and a half billion young people that study the book of Tobit uh, in church and in Sunday school. I think the nuns leave the part out about the, the marriages not being consummated or they just leave the part, the honeymoon part out. But uh, I think even little kids know what a widow is. They're, it's a woman and her husband's dead. Well, this happened seven times to a, a girl, and she doesn't lose faith, and she prays that God takes her life, but uh, she doesn't stop believing in God. Uh I don't, I'm not sure who would play a Toby. A Toby. I think there's uh, a little less weight requirement on that. Uh, Sarah is important. She's key. I mean, she has to be a sympathetic character. We have to like Sarah. And I was thinking of uh, Mira Sorvino. I mean, when I'm writing and I'm thinking, I'm picturing her uh, in my mind. I mean, the mighty Aphrodite. Uh, who can forget that? I, I know that was a long time ago, but uh, uh, the character's been married seven times. Now, how long is that going to take? Uh, and and you know, knowing uh, her father, uh, you know, there's not there's going to be an, an engagement period, long in, engagement period. So seven weddings, we're talking about ten years more or less. Uh, and then what about the uh, slowdown in the dating after she uh, has about six husbands pass violently uh, from a demon? I think uh, her opportunities to meet new men are going to be uh, spread out. So uh, I don't know what. Uh, Mira is playing 30 to 40. I think she's 50 years old, but she looks 30, which would uh, be perfect. Uh, and she has a lot of skills. She she could uh, she could do this with uh, without any doubt. Now, uh, Gabriel the angel, uh, I think of kind of an Adonis uh, character. Uh, and you know Hollywood's full of uh, of those characters. Uh, Brad Pitt. I mean, uh, I guess when I was writing this, uh, the Once Upon a Time in Hollywood was coming out, and the uh, I heard some girls at McDonald's giggling, so I eavesdrop. And they're talking about Brad Pitt on the roof uh, of. Uh, the house in the Tarantino film. And I thought, well, that would be Gabriel. Now, putting all this together, it's going to be, it's not going to be easy. But uh, I think, and I don't know who's religious or who's not religious. Uh, I don't, I think this film's a no-brainer even for uh, irreligious individuals. Jews, Christians, uh, Catholics, even Protestants. They might not like the magic, but it's the movies. Doesn't every movie have some kind of magic in it these days? Uh, uh, and they're, they're father-in-laws, brothers, sisters. It's, uh, you know, it's a wedding movie. There's seven weddings. So it's a family thing. The whole, the whole book of Tobit is about family. So... Uh, I think it's a winner. Uh, now let's talk about the demographics rule real fast. I'm not sure. Uh, I've done actually a lot of uh, research on this, and I first learned that there are 1.3 billion Catholics, and 70% of them speak English. Uh, Africa, Asia is really growing. You've got the United States and, of course, Europe. Uh, Philippines, uh, 110 Catholics. 110 million Catholics. Uh, and I, I looked at the statistics in uh, Hong Kong. Uh, even uh, Chinese are, uh, people are concerned that the Chinese are becoming uh, religious. 
it's a threat to communism and communist rule. The Catholic Church is growing, and the uh, cardinal, there are th several cardinals in China, but the cardinal of Hong Kong is really beginning to influence uh, people on a world stage. Uh, so if you make this film, if someone steps up and has the balls to make this film, uh, there are going to be uh, 1.3 billion Catholics lining up. Uh, they know the story from Sunday school, from when they were little kids. Uh, and add to that, I know there are a 280 million uh, Orthodox Christians. It's in their Bible, too. So we're talking about Russia, uh, Serbia, the Ukraine, uh, South, uh, Southeast Europe, uh, dominated by uh, Greek Orthodox, Russian Orthodox, Armenian Orthodox, uh, Ukrainian Orthodox. Uh, so you add those the Catholic and Orthodox populations together, you're talking about 1.5 billion people. And uh, I, you can't change the name. There goes your marketing. You can, it has to be called Tobit. Uh, those words are magic in uh, Catholic years. Orthodox too. Uh, he's a good guy. He uh, gives good advice. He's charitable. He's pious. And they will go see the film. Uh, if you call it Tobit. Uh, it doesn't matter where it's set. I think people understand that. Uh, and it's it's not a Catholic story, though. It's not a, a Christian Orthodox story. It's a story in the Old Testament uh, where all the characters are Jewish. Well, all the characters in Tobit are Jewish as well. Uh, so you've, and I think there's 25 million uh, Jews worldwide. So you add this all up, and this this film actually makes sense. Uh, why has this film never been made? Uh, I talked to a uh, Irish Catholic priest in Dublin, and uh, he said, uh, "Well, there is an anti-Catholic bias," and I. I agree. I, I think people have been cowered by this all these years. Uh, the only uh, feature length film was a silent uh, 100 years ago. And now there's been a lot of uh, short films. It, you know, in the Bible, it only takes eight pages. But I took each verse and expanded it into a scene. I don't know. There's, it's not. It's 98 pages. The script's 98 pages, uh, but the actual story that's printed in the Bible is only a few pages, uh, and no one's ever stepped up to make this film. Seven weddings and uh, a violent confrontation between good and evil. An angel versus a demon. Big fight in the middle of the street. Uh, lots of special effects. Uh, not necessarily expensive. There's only one scene where you would probably want to do that. And uh, uh, I'm not sure it's absolutely necessary to go overboard. Raphael kills the demon, wraps him up, rolls him down the street, and throws him in the river. Uh You remember, I, I was just telling you about the uh, casting agent. Uh, she brought up Mel Gibson's name. I said, well, read the script and tell me what you think. She e emails me back. This is Academy Award material. Uh, and I said, me? <laughs> I, it's, in, it's not, uh, I didn't write, you know, I'm not 3,000 years old. I didn't write it. No, she said, no, 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 Mel Gibson. I said, okay. You know, you're right. Uh, and I mentioned Adam Sandler's uh, movie portrayal of the uh, jewel dealer. Should have gotten an Academy Award. 
Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if Mel Gibson, if he can, if he can ever get around to making this movie, uh, he'll get robbed. I'm pretty sure. Uh, I think a lot of people will say, wow, Mel Gibson can act. He's a 80 year old man, a pious Jew in this huge predicament, blind, uh, out of money. Uh, but he's so worried about his kids. Uh, that he goes to uh, extreme measure to take, make sure his son finds a wife. Now, the wife is problematic. She's got a demon haunting her. But uh, uh, he has faith. It would be good for Mel Gibson, I, I think. Uh, you know, and profit. Forget all the Hollywood politics and the PR and the public relations people and the way they're going to spin it. Uh, it's a money maker. You know, look at the demographics. 1.5 billion people are, know the story. Now, admittedly, not everyone has heard of it. Uh, you may not have ever heard of it, but I, I just, I just told you the story in as simple terms as I can. Uh, demons harassing a girl and kill seven of her grooms. Thanks. I appreciate you calling.